Government corruption has never been more prevalent or caused more harm. It's why extremism is on the rise. It's why the financial gap between the haves and have nots has never been wider. And it's why our planet is at risk of an extinction level tragedy. That's why I need your help to keep exposing the truth about the rot on both sides of the aisle. Become a supporter or a friend of the show today by clicking on the coffee link in the description box below. Friends of the show, join me on a Zoom hangout once a month, and you guys can ask me any questions you want, and I can get to know you better. But the most important reason to help is to keep the show alive. Together, we can and will save our country and our planet. Thanks in advance and enjoy the show. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Plants and Politics. So the primary elections in Michigan are scheduled for August 2nd, but a handful of Republicans won't be on the ballot anymore. They've been deemed ineligible because they're accused of submitting thousands of fraudulent signatures. Here's the deal, and here's how this works. Um, in order to make it onto the ballot to run for public office, you have to collect a certain number of signatures from the public. And this year, there were 10 Republicans in Michigan that wanted to try and oust the current Democratic governor, Gretchen Whitmer. This, as you guys probably know, was due you know, primarily to culture war issues, CRT, anger over the state's lockdown orders during COVID, all that nonsense. But five of them have now been disqualified by the state canvassing board for allegedly submitting forged signatures. So the people who were disqualified are James Craig, Perry Johnson, Donna Brandenburg, Michael Markey, and Michael Brown. And rather than blaming himself or the company he hired to gather signatures, Candidate James Craig blamed partisanship because the state canvassing board is comprised of two Democrats and two Republicans. So when they voted on whether or not to remove these candidates, it ended in a split, of course, along party lines. So the Michigan Bureau of Elections had to step in and they had to make the final determination. And that bureau decided that the candidates failed to gather the requisite 15,000 voter signatures. So they kicked them to the curb. They kicked them off the ballot. And of course, the state Republican Party and then the candidates as well are crying foul. But tell me they wouldn't have done the same thing. It, you know, if the roles were reversed, you're telling me that they would have said, oh, OK, yeah, these are all fake signatures, like half in some of the cases with some of these candidates like half of the signatures that they gathered supposedly are false because what appears to have happened is that the candidates hired completely shady companies to collect signatures on their behalf. In many cases, the candidates hired the same company. And in fact, the Michigan Bureau of Elections said, quote, the Bureau is unaware of another election cycle in which this many circulators submitted such a substantial volume of fraudulent petition sheets consisting of invalid signatures. However, the Bureau was clear that the candidates don't appear to have been involved in any way. They don't appear to have had advanced knowledge of the forgeries. Now, here's the ironic and probably predictable part. At this point, <laughs> the Bureau found that some of the fraudulent signatures belong to voters who had died or moved out of state. And many of the same false names appeared on all of the candidates' submissions, uh, on all of their forms. So, like I said, in many cases, they use the same companies and the companies pulled these tricks with all of them. So they were so lazy and lacked so much imagination that they just reused the same names on multiple candidate forms, and I guess hoped no one would notice? <laughs> no. And the Bureau said that it appeared that some petition sheets had, quote, no evidence of normal wear. I mean, that's pretty obvious. Others, they said, appeared to have round-tabled. And they explain that that's where a group of people get together and they take turns signing each other's forms and then passing them along so that they'll have different signatures and, you know, with different pens, I guess. <laughs> and so candidate Perry Johnson has already appealed this decision. And unfortunately for him, 
the Michigan Court of Appeals rejected his petition. And it wasn't even close. They ruled unanimously and they said, nope, you're gone. So others have also submitted appeals, but it doesn't seem like it's going to work out for them, given what happened with the Perry guy. And, you know, these so-called signature gatherers could face criminal charges. So this is a pretty big deal. But like I said, there were 10 to start off with. There's still five remaining, but two of the five that were kicked off were considered to be front runners. So yeah, the Republican Party in that state is not happy. Anyway, guys, I will let you know if I hear any more. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Take care. I'll talk with you soon. 